Were your taxes tough this year? Organizer Jesse joins Kathy again to talk about how to stay organized during the year to make tax season a breeze. Start your prep today for next year's taxes. Hello, my friends. Thank you for joining me again for another fun episode. I'm very excited because I'm interviewing my friend, organizer Jesse. She's actually been on our podcast before uh, last, last spring, episode number 142. If you want to hear that original episode, definitely check that out. But I saw Jesse a few months ago, and she said that she was working at an accounting firm during tax season. I thought, wow, what a great topic to talk about organization and taxes. So, so that's exactly what we're going to talk about, Jesse and I. Enjoy this interview and this conversation. And especially since tax season has just ended, take away a few little tidbits to help 2024 be well organized. And that way you can get your taxes done quicker in, in 2025. You can feel better about it. You can be more organized going forward. So hopefully this is a timely topic to get you on the right track as we dive into life and receipts and papers and files. Well, in the words of Jesse, we want files, not piles. Enjoy. I'm so excited to talk to you today because, yeah, when I found out you work at an accounting firm over tax season, I'm like, woo, let's talk about how these two worlds of yours come together Yes, with the organization of papers. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's things that you strive to do as an accountant, um, like as a client, and there are things that you don't want to do. And not having all your stuff together is your number one offense. So I remember when I worked at an accounting firm, people like clients would come into the office with bins mm -hmm. full of every receipt they got throughout the last year. And I thought, what a waste of money that you're paying a CPA to sort through this to figure out your expenses or your income for the year. There are some simple little tricks that, I mean, I get it. Not everybody's into numbers. Not everybody's into organization, but there's some little tricks, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Very easy tricks. Why are we making so much work out of work? Oh, so wow. that's kind of how I look at it. It's, it's paper. How many times do you touch it? And you know, you're going to need it at the end of the year. So if you keep a running tally, so to say, that just makes the work easier as you go. I always think of all those receipts as they're, they're twofold. Number one, like you said, a running tally. So add it to the right tally sheet. But then number two, you really don't have to ever bring those papers back out again unless you're audited. Yeah. Yep. And how many times in our life are we really going to get audited? Hopefully none. <laughs> <laughs> That's my goal. Zero. That's one I don't want to screw up on. And by keeping your papers organized is your number one defense of being audited because numbers don't lie. Right. And if you're, if you're ethical, it's mm -hmm. not going to bring any alarms. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So paper organization, tax season, that, that's the number thing is you've got people who have no idea, people who are very organized. We have people who will label every single piece of paper, which is really great. You don't need to do that because your accountants know what they're doing. Um, but the ones it's like, oh, it's the same ones every year. And they're always forgetting the same information. So how do we get people when you're organizing to remember what you need to bring in? Checklists are great. Mm. Okay, so so for starters, let's pretend we're talking to either a an 18-year-old who's uh -huh. brand new into adulthood and needs to conquer tax season, you know, because they're now maybe maybe they're off of mom and dad's tax return, maybe they're not. Uh, or let's let's talk to the seasoned people who might have some bad habits. Mm -hmm. What what are some easy organizational tips that you have to make life easier in this daunting of a season. Okay. The very first thing is to take your mail out of the envelopes. Oh, what? I can tell you how many people open their mail and then they put it back in the envelope. 
So you just made the work double, triple. Wow. Many times you take that out and put it back. So if you're afraid of losing it, then you need to have a better system of where you're taking the mail out of. So remove the packaging and discard it. You do not need to keep the envelopes. That's the first thing I can tell you about getting organized. Wow. So if you take things out, this is the, the next thing I'm going to tell you is these beautiful little spiral tabbed. This is $5 at Walmart. And if you've got everything labeled and it's two-sided, so you can have things. Oh, there's a lot. So this is what I use for my taxes. Now, I don't take this in because, as I said, we can over-organize for our accountants. They don't need that. So everything comes and just goes into one little folder. So that's number one. You got to know how to file your paperwork. Get it out of the packaging and start classifying it. So if you're getting things related to ownership, so your car, you paid your license plate, you know that that's a tax thing. So you should put that in your vehicle house tab. Or if you have a pay stub, you know that that's your income. You can put that in your income tab. Or if you have interest from your bank account, that could go on your banking. Or if you have investments. So start by knowing what you have to organize for your paperwork. So what are some examples of, of the tabs that you have in your little tool? Okay. Well, this is exactly how I have. So IRS. You know, if you ever get a bill or something, and this sticks with you forever, if you ever have fraud issues, you're going to basically have a hard time with your tax return forever because you'll probably have to file a paper tax return because when you get fraud or identity theft. Oh. Um, so just knowing and having any of that paperwork handy there, if it's notes that your accountant needs to know. My next one is income. And since I'm self-employed, I either get 1099s or W-2s and I want to keep those all together. And then I categorize all of my expenses. So as a business owner, you know that you have office supplies, you have advertising fees, meals, entertaining, um, then also your vehicle and your office and your home. Advertising, I think I said that. Oh, materials when you're purchasing things. And so, I mean, and then health insurance, dental insurance, like where are all your receipts at? So you're just starting. I talk about these or even just a, a hanging bin. So uh, files, not piles. Ooh, ooh, That's I like that. One of my favorite things, because if you've got piles going, I mean, oh, you're just digging. But if you've got files, you can always see and it's easier to alphabetize or, right. you know, categorize whatever's best for you. But this is all paperwork. OK, so so let me back up a little bit, because we live now in a paperless society. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and even if we don't live in a paperless society, some of the papers we get aren't necessary for us to keep. For example, check stubs. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're getting paid by an employer, you don't have to keep your weekly or bi-weekly check stub because you're going to get the tax document at the end of the year that's totaling everything up, right? Yes. But you should also request, you know, several throughout the year so you can double check that your taxes are correct. Because again, coming out of tax season, there's a lot of people who are not withholding enough or they were holding too much or they didn't catch that raise that they were supposed to get. So, I mean, there's so many factors that when we're not getting paper, we're actually not double checking. That's true. So even though it's not paper, you should still be able to go online and either print it to a PDF, you know, save it in the cloud, do your free storage or download it to a backup. Um, yeah. So even though we're digital. Yeah. Still plenty. Well, that that leads me to the whole idea of we we still have to be accountable even though we don't physically see it you know i think of all the bills that i don't get in the mail anymore because they're automatically withdrawn from my account do i know when they go up am i okay with them going up or is there an error or we're still accountable to it even though we don't see it in front well, yeah. of us. you could have a leaky toilet someplace in the house and you didn't take notice of that bill that was a little higher and then here, three, four months later, now the utility company calls and says, hey, you know, what's going on here? Well, you're not going to get that money back because you weren't paying attention. And then just knowing too, like, because our utilities aren't always 
the current month that you could be paying ahead or you could be paying behind. So if you're trying to break that out in an accounting world and you need to know what goes with what. So electronic filing is just as important, if not more so than paper, because mm -hmm. you have to be able to find it. And work and personal are two different things. And I find a lot of people get those two things not only physically confused in a home when you're working from home, but also on the desktop. Oh, number one, how do you clean out all of that stuff? Yeah. And what's stuff? And if you've got multiple people using the drive, so shared drives is a huge thing to look at. Even if it's just your household, your husband and wife, and maybe a couple kids, and you've got now all of their documents. Is it updated? Wow. You know, let's, let's start even looking at utility bills. You know, who can say they could go back and produce the utility bills? Well, we don't have to anymore because we can call our utility company. But think about the good record keepers back in the day when you got one piece of paper in the mail and if that got lost, you're not getting a copy of that utility bill. I remember, well, this is like 30 years ago when I was new wife, new mom, it was not an electronic computerized world like we live in. And I had a book that I would keep every bill because we were strapped for money. So I was really counting pennies and I would kind of keep my own ledger or tally system. Like a dental bill would come in and I'd add it. And then I'd, I'd, every time I paid, I'd subtract out and I wrote down the date that I paid. I found like errors from mm -hmm. different vendors because nothing was electronic or computerized and I found adding errors to my benefit. I found yeah. double, double, I, I remember some medical organization, I was charged double and the insurance company didn't even catch it. I mean, I don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't do that type of checking because I just trust the systems, which is computerized. So maybe there's more trust that yeah. can be had, but that means I'm not also self-accountable. Like I'm not mm -hmm. aware of it. You know, just that paperwork, um, I was just going through my my credit card statement. So I always match up my receipts to my credit card. So that way I can check off that I'm keeping my paper copy. And then I get to relive what I'm spending money on. So not only am I consciously shopping when I'm buying it, I'm also consciously looking at what my habit is to spend money on things. I like that. And it's like, okay, so this month, and I choose to just do credit card and then pay it off every month because... I can do that. I can see, okay, I just basically buy groceries and gas. Or last year I put on new tires, you know, something like that. And knowing that that was coming, you have to plan all that. So I think reviewing paperwork on a regular basis, not only once a year for taxes, but it really keeps you um, kind of up to par with what you're spending on and what to expect when you go back to the accounting firm. Because it's like, okay, all of your basically ownership and identity stuff. The guy I work for, he's primarily farm taxes. So you want to think about the people who are producing and have a lot of paperwork and money coming in and out. It's just like, right. wow. They better have some good systems in place. Yeah. And you think about it when you're, it's 24 seven, you've got to be on a schedule. You constantly have to be, and then always learning on top of it. You know, I get it that you may not have the accounting degree. It might not be your thing. You know, it's no different than your investments. It's just not my thing, but we, it's still our life. We still have to be accountable and have some level of knowledge that will actually save us money if we're filing properly or, or yeah. tracking things properly. But, but also it's, it is us. It's, it's our decisions. It's not because our accountant didn't do something. It's us mm -hmm. that we have to own. So I, I, years ago, I, I took the Dave Ramsey class that talks about not having credit cards. And you mentioned that you use your credit card for everything and then you pay it off every month. And one, when I worked for an accounting firm, one of the accountants one day said, I've got good systems. I'm accountable and responsible. Why wouldn't I get a credit card that pays a cash back and make money off of my good systems? Mm -hmm. You know, so some of these money management rules that we might live by could be trumped a little bit. Yeah. 
if we have a good system, if we have some good habits in place, if we don't, then you, you need to be drastic with it, right? But we can't, we can't look at what you're saying with credit card and be like, oh no, that's, that's of the devil. It could be a benefit for you. Well, and it's funny too, because I've heard that debate where people are trying to play the system. So they get all these cashback rewards and this and this and this with the credit card. I just do it for convenience because it's once a month that I have to pay out. I'm not um, doing transactions with phone payments because I don't know if there's a fee for that stuff. And then, yeah, actually I can use my cash back, which has been great. You know, things I buy here and there, retailers, like I can use that. And it's like, okay, well, it was free money. Yeah. I still paid the bill. I haven't paid any interest. So I don't know what the harm is in that. And then too, how, how do you get paid cash anymore? You know, how do we just live on, on cash? You know, I'm not at the corner selling produce where somebody's giving me cash. I sell a service that is, you know, for hours and hours and then materials and how do we buy things with credit? So, right. Right. <laughs> however you want to look at it. It's the world that we're living in. Mm -hmm. And 90% of us don't go to a store to purchase things. So when you go out to a local restaurant, yeah, that's when you pay cash to your local. Yeah. Just, I don't know. Boy, we're talking about paper and it just blows up. So um, by all means, the paperwork, yeah, it's, as you hear, you can, it just goes and goes. Okay, so when you do run into a, a, a client or a person who is well organized, what is it that they're doing that, that sets them apart in the tax world? What are they doing all year long that just makes it easy for them to be ready for their accountant? Um, I'm going to say if they're actively scanning, because a lot of people have just gone to digital documents. Even though I have some paperwork, I do upload everything. So it can go on a thumb drive and it's in a file. Everything to do with that one year is uploaded and file named throughout the year. So people who are proactively, like if I went out and I bought five things for my business today, take the pictures of the receipts, throw them in the folder and walk away. Like you just did that work in the moment instead of waiting at the end of the year and doing 365 days worth of stuff. Right. So that it's a little so bit easier. Yeah. yeah. It's like opening the mail every day. You know, you can spend a minute or two to open the mail or you could let it build up for a week. And now you're putting an hour into the whole process of opening mail and disposing and filing and writing a checkout or doing electronic payment, whatever. So yes, by staying ahead of it as you go, that's your big thing. Um, and then secondly, just knowing what comes in must go out. So if you're going to purchase and you're going to have all of this expense and overhead, hopefully you've got information coming into you from professionals who can help you understand what write-offs are for your tax. Mm -hmm. Like, um, you know, I'm going to be buying this piece of equipment. What are the ways that I can have less tax issues? You know, if they're buying a new vehicle or maybe they need to put up, um, a building for the new vehicle, you know, just, it's always helpful as you know, to have second and third opinions coming in. So even though we're just talking about paperwork again, now it's like, okay, well, how do you, if it's in front of you, look, you're looking at what you're spending and what it takes to run your business. Now that's going to start to help generate, you know, cost saving planning and forecasting. Okay. I think about, I think about people who might not have a business Mm -hmm. And they're doing their own taxes online at hnrblock.com. Or I, I hear you saying that it matters what questions we're asking of our accountant, right? Mm -hmm. Or our second, third op opinions. What are the questions that non-business owners need to be asking when, when they're doing it themselves? Even, even business owners are doing it themselves. What are they missing out on that an accountant might bring value to them? Yeah. Oh, well, you're constantly, the accountants are always learning new tax laws. Yeah. And they always know what to look for, for your write-offs. What are your expenses? Again, if you need to make a higher purchase of something this year to counter set a loss, or maybe you had too much gain. Um, yeah. 
that's kind of the thing. You go to the doctor and you don't really know what to tell them or ask them because you feel fine. Well, it's pretty much the same thing when you go to the accountant. You think you'll feel fine until they start telling you like, oh no, you've got all these cost basis and because you own this and if you're going to transfer you know, upon death, you want to leave it in a will, do you want to sell it, you know, starting even to get into the legal side of how now your paperwork all all translate into understanding everything that goes in. So, I mean, even again, I think taxes, since it's once a year, that's such a good time to remind ourselves, we should be looking through all the paperwork, all the legal work. You know, if you've got deaths and families or divorces happening or new marriages or even moving, like think about even a realtor working with somebody and it's like, oh, I need the deed to your home to sell it. Well, I don't know where that is. Was it in the safety deposit box at the bank? And is, is it in the house someplace? Is it a fireproof vault? Like, where's the paperwork at to get you to start asking the questions? So we just sold our house last year and our realtor said, do you have your abstract? And she said it just like that. And I reached over and I handed to her and she said, oh my gosh, she's like, you just saved yourself a few hundred dollars because, and, and we, you know, the, the, the trick I guess for me is to have a one, a one-stop shop. And for me, it was the safety deposit box at the bank. Mm -hmm. that's where I would keep everything important, even if I didn't understand it. Right. (laughs) Yeah. And that's probably going back to new beginners is understanding to keep everything together, like items stay together. And so paperwork and important documentation, like that's all got to be together somehow. I love that. Oh, okay. So for me, I actually enjoy, I enjoy the, um, reflecting on the previous year. I enjoy number crunching. I get kind of geeky. I do a lot of my in spreadsheets. I download all of my transactions and sort them and calculate them. And then I'll get even geekier and say, okay, if this is how much we spent in groceries, what is it divided by 12? This is my average per month. Or how about every payday? You know, this is my average every two weeks. Or, you know, these are the kinds of things that make for some really fun conversations with my husband. To, mm-hmm. who is not as geeky as I am with our numbers, but yet still needs to be accountable, right? He still needs to know, uh, you know, so, so I like the idea of, of working your system throughout the year, whether you're scanning things in, you know, what else, what else do you think would be a little extra bonus for people to consider doing that will just help them during that stressful tax season? Oh, Everybody can benefit from just having a basic annual file system on top of this. So I keep all my tax documentation kind of in its own home. But then I have my everyday bills, invoices that come in, and then paperwork that I want to keep handy. So I think having, number one, the division of the two is ideal because you're not accidentally going to miss something in your everyday files that, oh, crap, of course I didn't pull that for tax season. It was in the wrong set of files. So I think that that's helpful is keeping everything separate. And especially if you're, if you have kids who happen to be working, maybe they're in high school and they got a part-time job, setting them up at this stage with their own system is key. Don't keep them all combined because now you're going to have to go back and straighten it all out someday, especially if they have to take their taxes with them because they moved or something. So the the new preparer needs to see it. It's like, well, where are my taxes, mom? Well, I don't know. <laughs> right. Maybe. That's so. so good. That's so good. I remember creating a portfolio for my kids and it, it's a binder. It's a binder that says portfolio on it, a three hole punch. This was my gift to them yep. as they were graduating high school and said, this, this has to be your, your Bible of important stuff. And now they'll call and say, hey, I got this and this, you know, is this important? I'm like, yep, put it in the portfolio. Because when they call and say, oh my gosh, I'm freaking out, go look in the portfolio. What does that document say, (laughs) right? (laughs) Yeah. Everything goes back to systems, doesn't it? It does. It really does. And even when you start putting things together, I have multiple birth certificates. For you? Yeah, for myself. 
And so like the hospital might have done their own and then maybe I got one from someplace else, but they all have them. So, you know, official birth certificate. And it's like, oh, okay, cool. And then you got the little thing where your, your feet um, and handprints are on them. And, you know, that's neat. There's a lot of people who don't have that stuff. You know, it's interesting. I kept baby books for all of my kids. And now that my kids are getting married and buying houses and now they get all this stuff <laughs> to keep in their own homes. And one of my kids says, what do you do with this? The baby book or the picture book with every school picture from preschool through 12th grade. Or, and I'm like, you know, I get it that it's, it's clutter maybe to you. And it probably means more to me than it does to you. But it wasn't six months later. He was calling saying, did I get my shots for this, this and that? And I'm like, buddy, I don't know. You got to look back in your baby book. Yeah. And I, and I, and I didn't even ask if he kept it. I mean, that would kill me if he threw it away. Yeah. But, but wait there is, there's stuff like that, that comes in handy at the right time when you, when you know where you put it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that stuff's pretty cool. I do too. I think taxes are pretty cool. I mean, I've got my entire bin of every tax return that I've ever done. Okay, that's that's what I have as well. Now, you don't have to keep them after so many years, right? Um, the accountant I work for said to keep them forever. The actual tax return, he says keep that forever. Now, the receipts and paperwork and supporting information, after seven years, you can pitch all that. I would shred yeah. it, but... I mean, yeah, I have my very first tax return when I was six years old because I had interest in a savings account. Oh, and that's fine. So, I mean, it's always just going to fit in one bin. Why not? Right. It's fun to look back and see where you've grown in, in, your, in your finances, right? Yeah. And like I put all the information on front. So I write what my, you know, federal and state, you know, do or refund was. So that's on the cover. I write how much I paid for my services done what my income was, and then I'll break it out, like what jobs. So it's all right on the cover. Because for a while there, I was pretty good with having a lot of jobs. So it's like, oh, this year I had like six jobs. <laughs> Jesse, <laughs> you, you were born with an organized brain, weren't you? Oh, yeah. There's people who said you were organizing in the uterus. <laughs> These cords over here. And I'm like, I can see that. <laughs> that's, awesome. that's awesome okay so at the beginning of a year when the calendar switches and you're gathering everything you need to do your taxes how soon do you complete your taxes um well I start pulling like clearing out my file for the year in February so you know I want to make sure that I've got all the statements for because I keep all my utility bills for a couple years just because I have looked back at what service fees are, what my usage for therms and kilowatts, just to kind of be dorky about it. And then I have that on a running annual spreadsheet so I can see what I pay per month, per year for every utility. So, I mean, when you talk to financial advisors, they're like, well, what does it cost to live? What's your budget? And there's just a lot of people who don't understand budgeting that, you know, yeah, you make a certain amount of money and then you have expenses. How does that weigh out? Where are you saving? So um, with the papers and the taxes, by knowing what you're spending, even like where are you putting savings into? So many people just don't do that. And so if we can get over, you know, the credit cards for because people are struggling, you know, to learn paying for cash and, and everything is much better. The tax stuff, I think it's fun. It tells our story. It does. It really does. It really does. And, and, you know, sometimes I hear my friends tell me on how uh, April 14th, they're still up late finishing their taxes. It doesn't have to be hard. No, it doesn't have to be time consuming if we have the right systems in place. Right. Yeah. Mid-March is perfect. If you want to get your taxes done, that's the time to do it. And I'm saying that just because you want to make sure all the mail can get to you. Because I think that's where people really struggle is things that are coming in revised or late. And it's like, man, that's not on you. But I mean, that checklist and knowing like I am waiting for this one piece, maybe I can get an online access and then get a printout instead of waiting for it to come. So, I mean, there are definitely ways to improve upon the system that's in place. 
and lessening stuff. Wow. To hear people who are selling property or ownership of things to make tax time easier. Oh, wow. Yeah. If you're, if you have property or land or rentals or employees, I mean, any of that stuff. Less is more. <laughs> less is always more. I like less because it is more. <laughs> Every year on New Year's Day, my husband loves to watch all the football games that are on, on television. So that's my day to pull out my files because I have a box where I put all my receipts throughout the whole year. Mm -hmm. And it kind of might sound unorganized, but it's that's where it is. I know what it is. So on New Year's Day, I, I get to the dining room table and I start sorting everything. Um, you know, a day or two later, I'll go out to my online website and I'll download all my transactions and I'll start my categorizing and and organizing that way so there's stuff you could do even before all the mail comes in oh yeah even just how you said that like so how do you when you take your receipt and you put it in the box you not sort it as you go or i don't i i have two boxes one is business and one is personal okay and, and i don't keep my utility bills, I shred them right away. I look at them because that is fun to see. Like they have some cool charts that show your electri electricity usage throughout the year. And, mm -hmm. and I look at it every month, but then I just shred it. I know I don't need it. And if I do, I know I can call the utility company and I'm fine with that. Um, so I'll go through my two areas, my business and my personal. And then I'm categorizing like these are all the home improvement receipts. Mm -hmm. these are all the, you know, Kohl's. I go to Kohl's a lot. So here's all my Kohl's receipts or here's, that's where I'll find paperwork that I know is tax related, like auto, whatever, insurance, premiums, all of that paperwork I'm putting together and I'm saving only the most recent, not everything that came in every single quarter throughout the year. You know how yeah. that happens where you get an, a, a new version every quarter? Yeah. I don't have to keep the old. So that's where I'm, I'm making the decisions on a few hours of, my file time this folder would be great for you because then you could just put your receipts right in there as you go i know i love that i love that sometimes five, it's okay five bucks at walmart get one for business and one for personal make it easier i love it god i love that oh um so we've built five houses i have all the receipts i can tell you pretty much to the dollar how much each house has in it and then I've got every single invoice alphabetized and tabulated by each vendor, how much was spent. And I can tell you how much all the windows costs or how much the brickwork or. Do you still own those houses? No, God, no. Uh -uh. But you still, have, you still have the documentation for all of them. Oh, yeah. That's fun. I have all of my bills. So if you ever want to look at what inflation has done in the last 15 years. I just look at last year versus this year. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've got stacks of Menards receipts that are just like this, but it's just, it's such an art form to look at it and say, okay, well, this folder is this house and these are all the A invoices and here's how much was spent at each vendor. And, you know, I think that that there's a lot to be said about that document organization to know what that paper represents because that's what it comes down to to us. We're, we're, we're water. We're mostly water. And then we're paper. <laughs> paper and water. Okay, so so here we, I know I'm going to have a lot of friends who are going to listen to this episode and, and just feel maybe overwhelmed or kind of roll their eyes like, oh my gosh, do I have to be in that much detail? And, you know, when tax season's done, tax season's done and we're on to living 2024, where does somebody start to make some changes? For me, go out and buy a $5 organizational binder system, right? But but what about somebody else? Where, where, where do they start? You start with what you need storage for. So as an individual, you know what bills you have. You know what credit card you have. You know what your utilities are. And then, yeah, you have personal documentation. So I have a folder for furniture. I have every receipt of every piece of furniture that I've purchased. So it's all together. So I have warranty. I know where I bought it. I know what I paid for it because I'm probably going to sell the furniture someday. You know, pieces here and there. It's like, okay, well, here you go. Here's the fabric care warranty and here's what I paid for it. Off you go. And I think that's awesome. So 
of a person like you, what about jewelry paperwork? That's something that a lot of people fail to think about, you know, where the receipt is, warranty information, broken prongs. I mean, I've had batteries where you have a lifetime ba battery. So, I mean, your paperwork revolves around what you own. And I just say, give me the piles of paperwork and I'll create a system for you. It's alphabetized and it should be movable. That's all I really care about. Oh, wow. That's interesting. You know, when you're not organized, it does cost you more money. Oh, gosh, yeah. You're losing money because you're misplacing things or, I mean, I can't tell you how many envelopes I've opened and there was like dollar bills in them because they were for do this survey or there was checks that were sent back and then people never cashed them. So they expired. It's like, that was a $300 check that you missed out on. So, yeah. And then spending the money in the storage units. Yeah. So, and then too, if you've got that invoice every month looking at you going, because you're not looking at your paperwork, it's like, why am I spending $400 a month on a storage unit? I don't go to. It's cheaper to just get a dumpster. Because if I haven't gone to it, you know, just start looking at things. And when you have that paperwork in front of you, it just doesn't lie. So, yeah. You're right starting this is the perfect time to start because you've just gotten everything taken care of from last year but knowing that you're going to pay the rest of your property taxes your vehicle license tag is coming due or you just paid it for the year um so like those are just your beginning so keep that separate from everyday life you know something else too that i think is important is that you know what is a tax related document? You know, I, I itemize my taxes. And if, if you don't understand what that means, it's, you need to, you mm -hmm. need to talk to an accountant. You need to figure out what does that mean? Because when you itemize, there's a lot more papers that I need to keep than if I wouldn't itemize. Yeah. So you have to have that level of knowledge and, and keep yourself accountable to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have a good accountant. That's going to help you to realize, oh, maybe you should do this or why aren't you taking advantage of this? Standard deductions versus itemized, like you said, and everybody's different. Yes, yes, yes. You know, I get it that we could probably do it on our own. We could probably go online and, and file our taxes, but every few years, there's so much benefit to bringing in the expert and mm -hmm. having a conversation with them. It's no different than us doing our own lawn work or, or bringing somebody else in to who knows what they're doing, how much different it'll look in the yeah. end. Well, is and remarkable. functionality, you know, how it's working for you. I think everybody needs to go to an expert in whatever field. Well, <laughs> we're experts in our field. We want okay. people to use our services and we do need to give back and use other people's services yeah. too. Well, I'm definitely not an accountant, but I can go work for one and I can learn throughout the process and have a good time. I, I mean, there is so much knowledge in taxes and it's scary that it's one of the least understood topic is, topics of um, our whole life. Yeah. I mean, people, this is why we work. This is our whole existence is to pay taxes. <laughs> you should really be concerned about what it is that you're keeping track of. Well, and when you're not organized, you're costing yourself more money. So mm -hmm. let's Let's be more accountable, more organized, and then we won't have to pay as much in taxes because we are tracking it. Yeah. I love people. Oh, I'm getting so much back, back for a return. And it's like, that's not good. That's an interest-free loan. You should be aiming for like zeros. Right, right. Talk, talk a little more about that because getting a big tax return is a nice way to have this savings account come back at you, you know, but, but talk about what, what do you mean here? That's not good. Well, no, because if you want a savings account, actually you should be putting money in your savings account and drawing interest. Whereas the money you've given the government for the year, that's interest-free loan. You're not getting anything extra out of it. It's your money. You yes. ever notice when you have to write a check, it's called the internal revenue service. I don't know what kind of service I'm getting here. I'm just giving you my money. There's no service. <laughs> I saw a little a little cartoon the other day that says, "Do you have you ever noticed that when you put the and IRS together, it spells theirs? <laughs> it is theirs. It's yeah. not. It's 
So let's hold on to our money longer and not give it to them. Yeah. And even if you owe in 20 bucks, that's doing really well. That's so true. That's so <sighs> so true. I don't know. I don't know. Well, it's a lot of fun. My whole goal with, with this podcast is just to challenge people to think differently. So mm -hmm. I so appreciate your, your outlook on this and giving us some different little solutions and tools that make it easy to think differently, right? Oh, yeah. Well, everything is just so repeat, even doing the taxes itself. That is such a repeat process. Get the paperwork, punch the numbers, put the things together, give it back. But I've touched probably 745 tax returns. So you think about, and then it got to be the last couple of weeks. And then I started doing some different placement of papers and folders. And it's just like, even I was in a rut. So we all just get stuck in a rut doing exactly what we do every single day. I think it's fun to challenge ourselves. I actually look for people. It's like, can somebody give me some critique on what I got going on? Like, I, I know I could be more efficient someplace. Somebody pointed out. And I feel like if more people were looking for that, like, hey, things that make you go, hmm, what am I missing here? Okay. If organizer Jesse is saying this, that makes me feel so much normal, maybe, that even you have some challenges that you get stuck in your rut and you need to be challenged to think differently. I love that. Thank you.